Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach who has lost and maintained a 140 pound weight loss. And it is Friday, so it is weigh-in day. We're gonna talk about my week. We're gonna talk about Weight Watchers because they just released something that I don't know how I feel about it. I mean, I don't have good feelings. I'm just wondering if my feelings are even worse than I originally thought about it. So we're gonna talk about that. We're gonna talk about some exciting things that happened this last weekend. I have some sad news to share with you. I actually shared it in Wednesday's What I Eat in a Day, but in case you missed that video, I'll link it and we'll talk about it a little bit more today. I'll share my weigh-in. I'll share how my new approach to eating is going. We got a lot to talk about. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Turn your bell on because I upload a weigh-in every Friday and actually five videos every single week. Down in the description box, I will have nutrition coaching. Highly, highly recommend those custom macros and calories. I actually had someone send me a DM on Instagram this morning and she said, oh my gosh, I went online to five different calorie calculators, entered my information, got five different responses. So thank you for doing my true macros. So I do offer that service. Don't use those online calculators. None of them are accurate. And again, like she said, you'll get five different answers. So invest a little bit in yourself and have your personalized macros and calories done. I also offer one-on-one -on -one coaching for questions, accountability, or to talk with me directly. Links, discounts to my favorite things, and come join our free, amazing, supportive Facebook group. We would love to have you. So let's jump in. Like I said, we've got a lot to talk about. So first, some good news. So this last Sunday, I did a 5K with one of the girls from my boot camp. Her name is Christy, she's lovely. We did the Wicked 5K in Tucson. So it's actually a half marathon, 10K, 5K, and then they have a spooky sprint for kids, which is so much fun. I wanna say it's maybe like a quarter mile or half mile sprint for kids, but it was so much fun because everybody was dressed up, whether they were wearing just Halloween clothes or costumes. My favorite costume I saw, I should have taken a picture of it, darn it, was this couple, a man and a woman, and they were in bathing suits, and then they had the inner tubes around their waist. They had sunscreen on their nose, sunglasses, sun hats, and they were playing Beach Boys music during the run. They were so cute. She was actually wearing a one-piece ba one bathing suit on the run more power to her. All my skin would be jiggling around. They looked amazing. They were my favorite costume that I saw, but there were so many people dressed up. It was just so much fun. I did the 5K and the 5K started at 8 a.m. So when it started, it was already 71 or 72. So it was warm. I was sweating before we even started the 5K. And at the end of it, I was really, really sweaty, but I did it and I was really excited because it was one of my fastest times yet for a 5K. Now I run walk it. Some of it I run, some of it I walk. I'm a very fast walker. And so for me, I can get the same calorie burn from fast walking as I can from jogging and it was hot. So, it, and there were quite a few hills. So in the hilly parts I walk, in the flat parts or downhill I ran, but I did get one of my best 5K times and it was just really, really fun. It was great to get out into the beautiful sunshine and also something spooky themed, Halloween themed always makes me happy. Not to mention I had 10,000 steps by 10 a.m. So that was a huge win. Our new house is coming along nicely. I actually did a little bit of an update in Wednesdays, what I eat in a day. Again, that video is linked for you. This week was exciting. We started with the plumbing and the electrical and I would imagine by the beginning of this next week, we'll be pouring the foundation. And then when the framing starts for me, that's when things become even a little bit more real because you actually get to see your house kind of coming to fruition with the framing. I'm excited. Things are moving along so quickly. They are so fast. It just blows my mind how fast these construction workers are. We also met with our realtor, the same realtor we purchased this home from on Tuesday about listing this home, kind of seeing where we are in the market, how quick are one-story houses in our community selling, what are we looking at for price for this house, when should we list this house. So we had a big in-depth conversation on Tuesday about where we're at with this house. We haven't made any final decisions, but I will most likely update you next weigh-in on what we're doing with our current home. I did mention in a previous video that Ideally, we would like to have this home close when our new house is done being built so that it's streamlined, but it's likely that we may have to list this house early and risk that this house would sell before 
our new house is done, which in a nutshell means we have to move twice. So that's kind of what we're deciding. Like what is the lesser of two evils? What risks do we want to take versus the reward? So we have a lot to talk about and we actually want to have a conversation with our lender as well to deter to see what she would recommend. Lucky for Tori and I, we qualify for both mortgages, which means that we can still own this house and own our new house, but we also want to use the proceeds of this house to put down on our new house. So that's where we're just, that's where our realtor comes in and our fine, and our loan officer comes in and both of them giving their advice on kind of what we should do. So again, I'll update you once we make some decisions. Also in Wednesday's video, I let you know about some pretty sad news. If you remember, I went to my 30 year high school reunion back in July. Prior to my reunion, I reconnected with my friend Erica, who was my best friend in high school, and my friend Curtis, who I've been friends with since fifth grade. And unfortunately, I found out about a week ago, week and a half ago, that my friend Curtis has, since the reunion, passed away. And that was very, very hard for me. Like I said, I've been friends with him since fifth grade. I mean, I've celebrated holidays with him. I've known his whole family a big chunk of my life and reconnecting with him. I was so excited to reconnect with him. And since the reunion, we have talked regularly multiple times per week. So when I heard the news, I was truly, truly devastated. I'm still kind of in shock devastation on the news. I mean, he was only 48 years old, which is just just devastating the circumstances and the reasoning. And I, I'm still waiting to hear more details on what exactly happened and when. I know that they're looking into planning some type of service. I don't know if I'm going to be able to go back to Spokane for it. With the house build and me going to Hawaii at mid, uh, on November 11th, it just kind of depends how that all falls. But I, I have to say that I am beyond grateful that I reconnected with him in a that I reconnected with him in May of this year. And since then I've had an ongoing friendship with him. And actually it's funny about three or four days before I found out he passed away, I had, we were messaging back and forth and I told him that I loved him. And that just gives me a sense of peace that he knew I loved him and that he took that with him to the very end. And that's really special for me. It's been hard, but it's definitely been comforting. And I'm so grateful we reconnected and that we just rekindled that friendship that we've had for so many years. Also, another sad note, not a sad note, but I have officially started my cycle. I was actually almost four days late, which has been the norm for me since I've been perimenopause. I still have a cycle every month. It's just not regular or consistent. So I was a little bit late, which is a bit of a bummer because if I'm on time next month, I'll be on my cycle in Hawaii. Nobody wants to be on their cycle in Hawaii. Had I been on time this month, I would have been done with my cycle before I left for Hawaii, but with how irregular everything is for me, we're just going to have to see. We're just going to have to see what the next cycle brings, but I've been feeling tired since starting my cycle. That's been the one symptom I've really had is just extra fatigue and tiredness. I just want it to be over. To be honest, I'd rather go through menopause and just get it over with rather than it having be having all these perimenopause symptoms, but that is a little bit of a bummer. So that happened this week as well. And that obviously can potentially play an impact on the scale. So we'll talk about my weigh in. But before we do, let's talk about Weight Watchers. So I took some screenshots from Weight Watchers Instagram page. So I've actually followed the Weight Watchers Instagram page for a long time. I have my phone here with the screenshots and I saw they had posted a series of slides about weight loss medication. So the first one said weight loss medication should be more accessible and more affordable. That's why Weight Watchers is launching access to compound semi-glutide. Now first, let's talk a little bit about weight loss medication in general. I think it was two years ago-ish Weight Watchers brought in weight loss medication as part of the Weight Watchers program. So it was something that you could gain access to being a Weight Watchers member. And there was a lot, and when I say a lot, I mean a lot of controversy around that. I myself did not agree with it. Number one, if your program works, if Weight Watchers works, why would you need a weight loss medication? Now I understand that not everybody loses weight the same. It's not successful for everybody. I understand that. And I have nothing against weight loss medication. However, if you're saying that your program works, like I tell you macros and calories works, I've and it does work. And for my clients that follow it, it does work. So for me to say, oh, you need to take this weight loss medication doesn't make a lot of sense if my program works. And that's kind of what my initial thought was to Weight Watchers. So as a Weight Watchers member, you had the option of having, I believe, a doctor prescribe you the medication and have that work hand in hand 
with the Weight Watchers program. And I know that that's worked for a lot of people and that is absolutely amazing. One of my other issues with weight loss medication is that it isn't sustainable. Typically when people get off of the medication, if they get off of the medication, and we're gonna talk about that, they typically gain all of their weight back rather quickly and then oftentimes more, which for me doesn't make a lot of sense to take a medication if it's not sustainable long term. So the next slide I saw says, compounded semi-glutide journeys with Weight Watchers Clinic starting at just one 29. Learn more and see if you're eligible. Link in bio. So this is where things got a little bit sketchy, concerning, questionable for me is I don't really fully understand why Weight Watchers promotes weight loss medication to begin with. But now they're making basically their own Weight Watchers branded, I mean, it's right here in the picture. They're making their own Weight Watchers branded semi-glutide medication. So it's just another money source, another source of revenue for Weight Watchers. And this particular medication is not FDA approved. In fact, no compound semi-glutide medications on the market are FDA approved, where some of the other weight loss medications are. So I feel like not only are they continuing to promote this, but now they're going to profit off of it by creating their own medication. And then I saw another slide where there were some myths about weight loss medication. And the myth that caught my attention, and the one that I think is really important to share with you and to talk about, is myth number three. You don't have to be on GLP-1s forever. Fact, obesity is a chronic condition just like high blood pressure or diabetes, and if requires long-term treatment. Not a quick fix. So just like you wouldn't expect someone living with diabetes to go off of their meds, the same goes for GLP-1s. Plus, research shows that most people who stop GLP-1s regain at least two-thirds of the weight they lost back within a year. So the myth of, oh, I'll take this GLP-1, lose weight and keep it off, is a myth. You actually have to stay on the GLP-1s forever. And what are the long-term effects of those, especially if it is a semi-glutide that isn't FDA approved? What are the possible health conditions, risks with that medication? And I will tell you, as a weight loss and nutrition coach, I talk to a lot of bariatric patients. I talk to a lot of people who have had eating disorders. I talk to a lot of people taking GLP-1s. And I don't know a single person who's taken the GLP-1, gotten off of it, and kept their weight off. Every single person I know in my real life, and there's a lot of them, Lots of my friends, lots of my boot camp friends have regained all of their weight when they got off the medication and all of my clients as well. So if you are going to take these GLP ones, you have to commit to it forever. And that's a big, big, big commitment. And again, we don't know what the long-term effects of these medications are, especially medications like Weight Watchers is putting out that they're branding. So I found this really, really interesting. Now, I will tell you that I have been doing a lot of research into GLP-1, especially these compound semi-glutides, because I want to know, is there some out there that are better than others? Now, obviously, none of these are FDA approved. So if that's a concern to you, I would not take these at all. These are just a more affordable option than the Ozempic, the Wagovis, all of those name brand medications. These are supposedly as effective. They just cost substantially less. I mean, Weight Watchers is telling you, you can do it for $129 a month. And then I'll tell you, down here in the little baby print, it says first month of the 12 month commitment. So you have to commit to 12 months is 129. Every month thereafter is 189. So the 129 is for the first month only if you commit to 12 months. So like I said, I've been doing some research into GLP-1s and semi-glutides. There is one that I found from one brand that seems to be maybe one of the better options. There's not a whole lot out about the Weight Watchers one because it's so new to Weight Watchers and new to the market. But I actually did a reel on Instagram with the compound semi-glutide that I found that I feel like if that's the route you're going to take, this one is probably your best option based on the research that I did. I will also say that I personally believe that the most sustainable, healthiest way to lose weight is to be in a calorie deficit and do something that is long-term and sustainable for you. Because whatever you do to lose weight, you have to do to maintain your weight loss. And Weight Watchers is telling us in that slide saying that this is something that is a lifetime commitment if you do take a GLP-1. Even the semi-glutide that I shared on my Instagram reel is, again, the same situation. You would need to potentially take it for 
whatever. Now, I am not a doctor, okay? I'm not a doctor. I'm a weight loss and nutrition coach. I personally never taken GLP-1 medications. I know a lot of people who currently take them, who have taken them, and that is my opinion on them. Now, if they work for you, I am so happy to hear that. And really, whatever works for you to become a healthier version of you, I think is amazing. For me, I just find it concerning. And like I said, a little bit sketchy that Weight Watchers is now going to put out their own compound semi-glutide. Again, it's new. It's not FDA approved. It just, I wonder if it's Number one, I don't think it's a smart decision for Weight Watchers because again, you're basically saying your program potentially doesn't work. And number two, is it even tested? Like what are the, what's the testing that has went into this compound semi-glutide versus the one that I shared on Instagram? I'll link the semi-glutide, the compound semi-glutide that I research and think is the best option down in the description box. And I actually reached out to them and they gave me a discount if you guys are interested. I'll link it, but please, 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 before you do any of these things, don't join Weight Watchers, get on their Weight Watchers compound semi-glutide without actually having a conversation with your doctor, not the Weight Watchers doctors, your doctor, and make sure that it is a healthy, sustainable option for you? Or are you better off just eating the foods that you like in moderation in a caloric deficit? Figure out what's going to work best for you. And every body is different, so everybody's weight loss journey is also different. So I just found that interesting that this is kind of really where what Weight Watchers is pushing even more than in-person meetings and following their points program. So let me know down below, what are your thoughts? What are your thoughts on Weight Watchers talking about GLP-1s in general and now creating their own semi compound semi-glutide. Let me know what you guys think, because maybe I'm totally off base here, but from a weight loss and nutrition coach standpoint, from someone who lost 140 pounds, I just don't know that this is something that number one, I agree with. And number two, that again, I think is sustainable long-term for most people. So yeah, that is the latest with Weight Watchers. And again, I'm not bashing GLP ones at all. If it works for you. And like I said, if you become a healthier, happier version of yourself, I am a hundred million percent for it. I would just be concerned about the ones that you're taking. That's all that I'm saying. So on a lighter note, <laughs> on a lighter note, let's chat about my way in. So like I said, I did start my cycle a little bit later this week, honestly, just a couple of days before I had to weigh in. And I've been feeling decent, not overly bloated, like I normally am during the first few days, but just for me, it's been a lot of tiredness and fatigue. But when I stepped on this scale today, I'm actually up 0.2 pounds. So that is 100% a weight fluctuation. I didn't gain 0.2 pounds of fat. It's just a fluctuation based on my cycle. I have been doing so well with my eating. I've really been whole food focused. I've really been, if it is a processed food, I'm making sure that it's not a heavily processed food and that it has some fiber and some protein in it. I'm limiting myself to my two protein supplements a day. I'm eating more fruit, more vegetables. I'm actually feeling really good and I'm enjoying this way of eating a lot, honestly, a lot more than I thought that I would. I'm of course going to continue this until I go to Hawaii. And as we get closer to me leaving for my trip, I may decide to just do this throughout the rest of the year. So I'll definitely keep you guys posted, but I'm feeling really good. Yeah, I'm feeling really, really good. I'm excited about my house. I'm working through the sad things that have happened. I'm focusing on the good things that have happened. And I'm just grateful. I'm grateful for every single one of you. I'm grateful for my family. I'm grateful for my friends. I'm just really grateful. So thank you. Thank you for being such a special part of my life. It really, really means a lot to me. I also want to hear from you. Let me know your thoughts on Weight Watchers and the GLP ones. Let me know how your weigh-in was. Did you gain? Did you lose? Let me know everything down below. And if you enjoyed another weigh-in, give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not. Turn your bell on because I upload a weigh-in every Friday in five videos every single week. Down in the description box, again, I will have the compound semi-glutide that I did some research into. If you want to look into that for yourself, as well as nutrition coaching, links and discounts to my favorite things. And of course, come join our free amazing supportive Facebook group. We would love to have you. Happy Friday, and I'll see you in tomorrow's grocery haul. Bye!